Hello, my name is Ivan Tresoldi, and I'm a Cloud Specialist System Engineer working in the VMware Cloud Provider Program. In this video, I will guide you through the fundamentals of VMware vCloud Director. VMware vCloud Director is a software product that provides the ability to build secure, multi-tenant clouds by pulling virtual infrastructure resources into virtual data centers and exposing them to users through web-based portals and programmatic interfaces as a fully automated, catalog-based service. First of all, let's have an overview of the terminology and architecture of vCloud Director. vCloud Director relies on vSphere resources to provide CPU and memory to run virtual machines. In addition, vSphere Data Store provides storage for virtual machine files and other files necessary for virtual machine operations. vCloud Director also utilizes vSphere distributed switches and vSphere port groups to support virtual machine networking. You can use these underlying vSphere resources to create cloud resources. Cloud resources are an abstraction of their underlying vSphere resources. They provide the compute and memory resources for vCloud Director virtual machines and vApps. Cloud resources also provide access to storage and network connectivity. Cloud resources include provider and organization virtual data centers, external networks, organization virtual data center networks, and network pools. Before you can add cloud resources to vCloud Director, you must add vSphere resources. A provider virtual data center combines the computer and memory resources of a single vCenter server resource pool with the storage resources of one or more data stores available to that resource pool. You can create multiple provider virtual data center for users in different geographic location or business units or for users with different performance requirements. The Cloud Director supports multi-tenancy through reuse of organizations. An organization is a unit of an administration for a collection of users, groups, and computing resources. Users authenticate at the organizational level, supplying credentials established by an organization administrator when the user was created or imported. System administrators create and provision organization, while organization administrators manage organization users, groups, and catalogs. An organization virtual data center provides resources to an organization and is partitioned from a provider virtual data center. Organization virtual data centers provide an environment where virtual systems can be stored, deployed, and operated. They also provide storage for virtual media, such as floppy disks and CD-ROMs. A single organization can have multiple organization virtual data centers. An organization virtual data center is mapped to a vSphere resource pool. A vApp is a unit of deployment within vCloud Director. A vApp contains one or more VMs and their networking configuration, startup order, and other parameters. vCloud Director presents the vSphere storage to organizations by using objects called storage profiles and presents NSX networking by using objects called organization networks. Let's now have a look at how vCloud Director networking works. vCloud Director provides several network abstractions to cover different set of use cases. These abstractions hide the underlying complexity of allocating VLANs, creating vSphere port groups, and attaching them to VMs. vCloud Director takes advantage of VMware NSX to provide powerful networking and security services consumable through a self-service portal. There are three fundamental network types available in vCloud Director. External networks, organization networks, and vApp networks. Let's have a deep look inside each kind of networking available in vCloud Director. External networks. External networks are typically used to connect to the internet or to corporate LANs. These networks could be shared between organizations or dedicated to a single organization. 
they represent an external physical network already existing outside the vCloud Director scope. An external network maps to a vSphere port group. Organization networks. These are networks that exist inside a vCloud Director organization. The primary goal of an organization network is to allow communication between vApps. Organization networks can be connected to external networks to provide communication with the outside world in two ways. Direct connection. The organization network is directly bridged to an external network. In this configuration, vApps are directly connected to the external network and exposed to the internet or the corporate LAN without any protection. Possible use cases could be bastion hosts, DMZ, third-party security appliances, or connection to a safe network such as dedicated connectivity to a corporate LAN. Rooted organization network. The organization network is connected to the external network by a NSX Edge Services Gateway a virtual appliance which provides networking and security services like firewall, NAT, load balancer, VPNs connection, etc. On the internal side of the Edge Gateway, the organization will use a private IP addressing scheme. This is a very common and very secure deployment scenario for vCloud Director Organization Virtual Data Centers. A third type of organization network exists, the isolated, Isolated means that the organization network is not connected to an external network and it is only available inside the virtual data center. VAP networks. VAP networks are entirely configured by the consumer and exist to provide network access for VAPs. They are the same as private internal networks. Multiple VAPs can communicate with each other by connecting to organization networks. There are two types of VAP networks. Direct. A VAP network is directly connected, bridged, to an external organization network. Or routed. A VAP network is private, behind an edge gateway that performs network address translation. The edge gateway then connects the VAP network to an organization network, which in turn can be routed or directly connected to an external network. Let's now access the vCloud Director user interface. This is the logon screen of vCloud Director. We'll use the administrator credential, so we'll log on as a system administrator. In the main screen, the home screen, you can see two sections, guided tasks. Guided tasks provide a quick way to provision additional cloud resources, such as uh, attach uh, additional vCenters to, to the vCloud Director, create organization, add uh, catalogs, allocate more resources, so virtual data center to an organization. And then we have the tasks section, which is a quick way to manage already provisioned resources so manage organizations, manage provider VDCs, manage external networks, etc. The second available section, second available tab for the service provider system administrator is the manage and monitor tab. The manage and monitor tab is divided into three main sections, organization, cloud resources and vSphere resources. Let's have a look at the organization. Here we can see the list of all already configured organizations in, uh, in this uh, demo environment. If you remember from the previous section, because the Director supports multi-tenancy through the use of organizations. So an organization is a unit of administration for a specific collection of users, groups, and uh, computing uh, resources. An organization can be considered uh, a single customer or a business unit uh, for a customer. Let's create a new organization. We name this organization T3. 
this maps to the default organization URL to be used to connect to the Vehicle Director portal in this dedicated section available only to this specific tenant customer. Let's call this organization Tenant Tree. Click Next. Here we can provide LDAP uh, options. So an organization can use uh, LDAP services as the directory of user and group that can be added to the organization. In this specific case, we are not going to use LDAP. We leverage only local vehicle director users, but we have the option to provide uh, and to map the organization to a system, so managed by the service provider, a system LDAP service like an Active Directory. And in this case, we map every organization to a specific organizational unit, or we can use a custom LDAP service, so federate this organization with an external and customer owned Active Directory. We are now going to add a local, uh, local user. It's always recommended to create at least one local user, even if we are leveraging uh, an external LDAP source. We call the user t3admin. We provide a password. and we assign the organization administrator a role to this uh, user. Then we click Next. Here we can configure the sharing and publishing settings for the catalogs that can be created inside this organization. Catalogs, a collection of uh, virtual machine templates or uh, ISO files. So everything that can be used to create, provision new workloads or to install operating systems inside uh, virtual machines. Catalogs can be private, so only available inside the organization or can be public, so shared and made publicly available to all the other organizations. Uh, an example of the public catalog use case is the service provider who makes uh, virtual machine templates available to all the customers hosted in the vCloud Director infrastructure. We then have uh, SMTP server email preferences. Uh, email are used to send notification to, to organization. We can set uh, a system default SMTP server managed by the service provider, or we can set a specific SMTP server owned by the organization. Then we have the policies uh, section. Uh, the policies section is divided into leases, quotas, and uh, limits and password policies. Leases specify the maximum time the VApps, VApp template uh, can run and can be stored in the, the organization virtual data center. Let's set the maximum runtime lease to never expire so uh, the apps are will not be automatically shut down and leave all the other value as the default click next we are now ready to complete and we can click finish and here we are our t3 organization created. We can double click to assert the organization as a system administrator user. Let's go back to the manage and monitor uh, tab and then let's have a look at the vSphere resources uh, section. We must remember that Vehicle Director relies on vSphere resources to provide CPU, memory, storage and networking connectivity to, to virtual machines. So in this section we can find uh, all the vCenters attached and managed by this uh, vCloud Director, 
all the resource pools or vSphere clusters managed by the vCenters attached to vCloud Director, all the hosts that made the vSphere clusters, all the data stores, and all the vSphere port groups available for consumption. Let's move to the cloud resources section. Cloud resources are an abstraction of their underlying vSphere resources. So our resources are presented to customers in terms of policies, in terms of uh, quality, not in terms of uh, vendor model, uh, which kind of hardware, so only in terms of uh, resources available and quality of the available uh, resources. Let's make an example. We have a provider VDC, so provider virtual data center. Provider virtual data center combines the computer memory resources of a single vCenter cluster. If we look at the only available provider virtual data center that we have in this vCloud directory installation, let's look at the properties. We can see that this uh, provider VDC named PVDC1 is backed by a resource pool. Uh, the cluster in vSphere is the top level resource pool. So in this case, uh, we have the region A01 comp01 cluster, vSphere cluster listed. And these CPU and memory are the overall resources made available by the cluster region A01, COMP01 for, uh, for consumption. So this is the provider virtual data center. If we look at vSphere resources and we look at resource pools, we can see that region A01, COMP01 managed by the, this vCenter is the only resource pool available. So we have a mapping, a direct mapping between this vSphere cluster and its abstraction, which is the provider virtual data center, in this case named PVDC01. If we look at the vSphere web client, we can see that we have this region A01 comp01 cluster hosted by this uh, vCenter. Okay, so we have a one-to-one -one mapping between this cluster and this provider VDC. Let's move to the organization VDC section. Organization virtual data center, remember, provides resources to an organization and are partitioned from our provider virtual data center. So if we look, uh, for example, at the T2 OVDC virtual data center, we can see that is owned by the T2 organization and is uh, contained in the provider VDC named PVDC1. What exactly is a virtual data center if we look uh, at the vSphere infrastructure? Let's have a look. Remember we have our region A01 comp01 cluster represented in vCloud Director by a provider virtual data center named uh, PVDC1. And then we have T2 OVDC, which is a resource pool under the region A01 COMP1 cluster. And this resource pool is represented in vCloud Director by an organization VDC. So this is exactly the mapping between vSphere object and vCloud Director object. Back in the Cloud Resources section, we have, uh, for example, the list of all edge gateways appliances deployed by all the customers, the list of external networks available for consumption, and the list of network pools available to create uh, logical network segments. Let's create uh, an organization virtual data center for the T3 organization we created a few minutes ago. In this way, we can enable the vCloud organization to provide the workloads. Okay, you are not able to create any 
new virtual machine or network objects uh, for an organization without deploying uh, a virtual data center okay so let's choose the new organization BDC wizard let's select the T3 organization we select the provider VDC which will host the organization virtual data center and then we have to choose an allocation model the organization uh, VDC's allocation model allows you to control the quality of the service you're providing let's have a look at the allocation models The available allocation models for virtual data centers are the pay-as-you-go, also known as on-demand. The main use cases for the pay-as-you-go allocation model could be catalog template storage, temporary or transient needs, or low-cost, low-performance workloads. The definition is made of uh, no upfront resource allocation, resources reserved as user create the apps, can set a percentage of resources to be reserved and the VCPU rating can be adjusted. So the pool expands to accommodate resource reserved on demand. The allocation pool or virtual private cloud could have a main use case as uh, per project hosting, seasonal applications like uh, end of week uh, spikes, end of month spikes, financial systems, or environment uh, which requires a minimum guarantees of performance. The definition is a allocated pool of resources with a percentage reserved. The cloud admin controls the ability to overcommit resources. Users cannot modify virtual machine reservation and limits, and resources can be shared between organization virtual data centers. So we have a partially reserved pool of resources with an overcommit range. And then we have the reservation pool, also known as dedicated cloud. The main use case is uh, production workloads where per virtual machine level control is needed, such as Java applications or databases, dedicated resources, or the need for an easily budgeted billing. Definition is allocated pool of resources with 100% resources reserved. Users can adjust virtual machine reservation and limits and there is no sharing of physical resources with other organization virtual data center. So we have a fully reserved pool of resources, 100% guarantee. Back to the new organization VDC wizard. I'm going to choose the pay-as-you-go model for this uh, demo. I click next. I have to configure a CPU quota for the virtual data center, let's say 2 gigahertz, with a 20% resources guarantee. A vCPU speed, I choose 1 gigahertz. I choose 3 gigabyte of memory quota with 20% uh, guarantee and a maximum number of deploying VMs of 100. Then I have the, the chance to choose the allocate storage. So to allocate storage based on the storage policies, so the quality of storage available to be consumed, I add uh, iSCSI Sun and I choose uh, 25 gigabyte to be allocated to this virtual data center. I click next. Then I choose the network pool, so the pool of logical networks available to customer to create uh, logical network segments backed by NSX. Then I can create an edge gateway for the customer. I'm going to create one. I name my edge gateway T3 Edge. I choose the compact size, then I click next. I configure the external network attached to the external side of the edge gateway.
I set the default gateway. I can choose to create an internal network. So the first internal network for this organization virtual data center attached to the edge gateway. I name it T3.org. I have to choose the IP addressing of the of this uh, uh, organization network. So I need to set the default gateway, the network mask, and I can provide a range of IP addresses into the into this network segment available to be assigned to customer workloads. I have to choose a name for this uh, organization virtual data center. I name it uh, T3 OVDC. I leave the flag uh, enable set. I click next. And on the review screen, I click finish. And now the deployment starts and we have to wait until the new OVDC with its uh, edge gateway and internal organization network created. So let's wait for this to be created. Here we go. We have uh, our T3 OVDC, Organization Virtual Data Center created with a pay-as-you-go location model owned by the T3 organization and hosted in the provider VDC named PVDC01. As a system administrator, we can access the T3 organization and we can see all the available virtual data centers, for example. In this case, we have only one virtual data center, T3 of EDC, we just created. We can enter this virtual data center. It's uh, empty. It doesn't contain any VApps because uh, we have just created this uh, organization VDC, but uh, we are now ready to deploy virtual machines in this uh, virtual data center. We can find an, uh, an already provided edge gateway and an already provided organization VDC network that we have created during the virtual data center creation wizard. Before uh, entering the user interface uh, with an uh, organization user, I want to show you an already populated environment like the T1 of EDC, so the virtual data center owned by tenant uh, or organization T1, where we can find uh, an already deployed VApp made by two VMs. We can enter the VApp and here we can find an interesting diagram of the, the VApp, so how the virtual machines are connected to the network. I want to show you a drill down of this, uh, of this diagram. In addition to the VApp diagram, in the VApp details, we can find a list of uh, running virtual machines where we can access uh, the configuration. So we can pop up the console, we can start, stop the VM, and do all the stuff like in vSphere, insert uh, CD, or look at the properties of the VM and change for example, hardware properties like the number of virtual CPUs, total memory allocated, allocate new disk space, etc. And then we have the networking configuration of the, of the VApp. To conclude this overview of the organization environment, we have the home screen when we have the list of all deployed VApp for the organization despite which 
Virtual Data Center contains the virtual machine. So a general overview of all the available VApp. From here, we can add a new VApp from catalog. We can add a new VApp importing it from an OVF template. We can build a new VApp from, uh, from scratch. And if we are a system administrator, so this button is not available to the organization administrators, we can import a already created VM from uh, vSphere. We then have the My Cloud view, which is the same we have just seen, with the list of all vapps, VMs. And we have the catalogs with the overview of the organization internal only catalogs or the public accessible catalogs. And then we have the administration tab where we can find all the virtual data centers with the details of the virtual data center itself. So the vapps, the vapp templates, if we have any edge gateway deployed, if we have any organization network deployed, we can see here that this T1 orgnet RTD is a rooted organization network. So it's an internal network attached to an edge gateway, in this case, this edge gateway. And this edge gateway also has an external interface used to connect it to the public internet or to a dedicated external VLAN, such as uh, an MAPLS connection. Here we can see the recap of the number of interfaces connected to, to this edge gateway. So two organization networks internal and one external network. Let's now open the, the Cloud Director portal as a, an organization administrator. So let's have a look at our organizations. In the properties of the T3 tenant we created before, we can find the URL for this uh, organization. Let's copy it. Let's open a new incognito Windows to create a new environment. Let's paste the URL. This brings us to the tenant portal. Let's input the organization administrator credentials, T3 admin. And here you can see the new environment provided for the tenant T3. It's still empty because we have no VApp created yet. Here you can see in the home screen that the button I mentioned before, the import from vSphere is not available. From here, the tenant administrator, the organization administrator can create a new VApp from catalog, can add a new VApp importing it from an OVF template, or can build a new VApp from, uh, from scratch. I want to show in the administration tab under Virtual Data Center, if I click the T3 Organization Virtual Data Center and go to the Edge Gateway, the Organization Administrator can manage the Edge Gateway services by right-clicking the Edge Gateway and clicking on Edge Gateway Services. This opens a new window when there, where the Organization Administrator can uh, manage and configure the HTTP service network address translation service, firewall service, manage static routing, it can create IPsec VPNs, and it can create and configure load balancer services. Starting from uh, vCloud Director 9.0, a new user interface, uh, an HTML5 portal, is available to, to tenants. Let's have a look at this new user interface. The transition is not completed yet from the old to the new portal at the time of my speech, but uh, 
it's going to be completed in, uh, in the next months. So this is how the new user interface uh, looks like. There is a virtual data center overview with the overall consumption of CPU memory and storage shown in the, in the home screen. We can enter the organization virtual data center to look the detail. We can have the list of the apps and virtual machines. Let's create a new virtual machine for this tenant. Let's name it uh, T3 VM1. We must select a virtual data center where deploy the VM. Then we can choose to deploy a new VM or we can choose to deploy a VM from an existing template. Let's choose from an existing template. Let's go for this TC Linux base. And here you can see in the status bar that the virtual machine T3 VM1 is being created from template. And now let's wait the completion of the task. Now that our virtual machine has been created, we can enter the details. In this section, we can see all the general details of the VM, like the computer name, the operating system family, the hardware version, the virtual hardware version, etc. We can see all the hardware configuration of the VM, like number of virtual CPUs, total memory allocated, hard disks, NICs. In this case, we can choose to attach the VM to the T3 org we created before. We can choose how to allocate an IP address to this virtual machine, choosing between JCP, static, choosing from an, an IP pool we provided at the time of the organization network creation, or static, assigning a manual IP address of our choice. Let's choose static from the pool and then click Save. Okay, now our virtual machine is connected to the organization network. We are ready to power it on. And now we have our virtual machine powered on. An additional task we can perform here in the new HTML5 user interface is to manage existing organization VDC networks or create new one. Let's create uh, a new network named uh, T3 or Net2. Let's create it uh, as an isolated network within this virtual data center, so without any access to the external network. Just as an example, we provide a gate with a net mask. Let's wait for the network to be provisioned. So additional networks can be created or existing networks can be managed or existing edge gateways can be managed. From the content menu, we can select uh, libraries and we can see all the available templates. These are the templates made available by the system administrator. And then we can have a look at the media and other files made available uh, inside the organization or by the service provider. And also the list of uh, catalogs. In this case, we have a, a public catalog named templates that has been published by the, the service provider and is made available to all the, all the tenants, all the uh, organizations. As I said before, there is a transition in progress between a, a legacy Flex user interface and the new HTML5 based user interface. So the most common and most frequently used features 
have already been ported to the new user interface. The legacy user interface is uh, still available to provide and to manage all the items that are still not available in the new user interface. So we can have a look at the legacy user interface. We are logged in with the, the T3 admin. So we are in the same context of the tenant tree organization. We can see in the home screen the T3 VM1 the app with a single virtual machine now running. If we look under administration, we have the chance to see the available virtual data center, in this case the T3 OVDC1 virtual data center. If we click, we can enter and we can see the vapps, the vapp templates, is any, the media and other files, if any, the storage policies available to this organization virtual data center, the edge gateway, we can manage existing edge gateways or we can create additional edge gateways and we can see the same org VDC networks so this is the new isolated network we just created in the in the HTML5 user interface. Let's have a look again at the networking features available in vCloud Director. You can configure the ACP, source and destination network address translation rules, the north-south firewall so you can block or allow traffic to and from the virtual data center based on uh, IP address, uh, on the seeders, port and protocols. You can manage static routing and you can configure IPsec VPNs, so side-to-side -side VPNs between different organizations in the same vehicle directory instance, between uh, different organizations in different vehicle directory instances, or between uh, vehicle director, virtual data centers, and uh, on-premise infrastructure. And finally, you can configure a load balancing service. These are the basic features the basic networking features available in vCloud Director out of the box, but there is more you can do if uh, the system administrator or the tenant itself convert the edge gateway to advanced. What happens is that uh, you are now able to access all the advanced networking services provided by, by NSX. After the conversion has been made, if we access the Edge Gateway services, a new HTML5 user interface will open. And now you can see that a new user interface is providing the service configuration. In the scope of the organization administrator, the same services as before are configurable like uh, IPsec VPN, like uh, network address translation, like uh, load balancer, like uh, north-south firewall. But uh, if we move to the system administrator view and we enter the same edge gateway configuration, we can see that all the services, all the additional advanced networking services are available for configuration. The same advanced services can be made available to tenants simply enabling additional privileges for the organization users. Okay, so in a very granular way, the service provider can enable specific services to any different uh, tenant. In this case, for example, you can see SSL VPN available for configuration. This is a client to site uh, VPN for Mac, Linux or Windows users. You can see that both IPsec VPN and L2 VPN for logical data center extension on layer 2, so real hybridity can be configured between different cloud instances or between on-prem vSphere environments to to the cloud director based environments a new advanced load balancer service 
with uh, L7 capabilities in addition to uh, L4 capabilities already available in the previous version of the load balancer. As you can see, a very rich set of uh, features available to be configured by the service provider or in a self-service way by the, by the organization. So to recap, from a tenant perspective, we have the opportunity to use two different user interfaces. The first is the Flex user interface, where all the capabilities are available and complex uh, tasks or architectures can be, can be created. And now, in addition to the legacy Flex user interface, a new HTML5 based user interface is available with the most common uh, tasks available. So you can view virtual data center, you can create new virtual machines, you can create network, you can manage edge gateways, you can create uh, libraries and consume libraries, so catalogs. So the most common tasks are already available in the HTML5 user interface. A migration is in uh, process, so we can expect to have a full transition to the new user interface with all the features available in uh, the next releases of uh, vCloud Director. This concludes our vCloud Director 101. Thank you for watching.